Hey there, I'm Keith, and I've been using my Sony a7S III for a while, and I find myself using a number of accessories with it, and I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of what those accessories are. Some of them are specific to the a7S III, and some of them are just more general filmmaking things that I use with the a7S III to get the best image quality out of it. Jumping straight into the batteries, the first battery you'll use is the NPF Z100 batteries that come with the camera. Um, I'm sure you'll have multiple of these. If I'm just doing quick shoots, this is all I use. However, if I'm sitting down on a tripod, I've been using these uh, nine volt, three amp power delivery USB-C power banks. Um, I'll just put these like kind of down on a table or anything and just put a USB-C cable from here to my camera and it'll power it for as long as this has power. So. These are nice in a pinch where you don't have wall uh, power delivery. If you're looking to make more of a rig, you want a V-mount battery. I've been using the FX Lion Nano 2 because it has a D-tap V-lock mount for just a regular V-lock adapter plate or this USB-C power delivery port on top that like the power bank, you can plug your USB-C into here USB-C power delivery port on your a7S III, and you can power your camera as long as this has battery. ZG Cine reached out to me and they have a battery that is much more affordable that also has the power delivery and D-tap. So I'm putting this battery through its paces, testing it against the FX Lion Nano 2, but this battery is much more affordable than the FX Lion. Uh, I'm doing some more testing on it, so I'll give you guys more of a long-term review in a little while, but needless to say, V-mount batteries are the best way to power this rig. My next accessory for the Sony a7S III are memory cards and a memory card case. And not just any memory card, but the appropriate memory card for what you want to record with your camera. If you're looking to film 4K 120 SNQ SI, you'll need a CF Express Type A. If you are looking to film 4K 30, 60, or 120 in SI, you'll need a V90 card. If you're looking to film 4K 120 or 4K 60 in SNQ in XAVC S or HS, you'll need a V60 card. Or if you're looking to film 4K 60 up to XAVC S or HS, you'll need a V30 card. There are some other caveats to that when selecting memory cards for your a7S III. If you'd like a full breakdown of when I use what uh, SD cards for my a7S III, let me know in the comments down below and I'll gladly make that video. My next accessory for the a7S III is a cage or to rig your camera up for your shoot. I have individual videos going over my run and gun and my filmmaking kit for my a7S III, so I'll leave those linked at the end of the video if you're interested in learning a little bit more. But rigging up your camera can really help you if you need to shoot all day and you're shooting raw or you just need a monitor or a handle for more stability, rigging your camera up to film the way you wanna film will make your life a lot easier. My next accessories for the Sony a7S III are microphones. And for shotgun microphones, I've been using the DD D3 Pro. For wireless microphones, I've been kind of using a blend of the uh, DJI mics, the Rode Go 2s, or the Deity Wireless. Uh, it really kind of depends on the shoot that I'm doing. Um, each of them have their own strengths and weaknesses. I'm thinking of making a whole video about that in the future. So if you're interested in that, again, let me know in the comments down below. I've been using these DJI mics. I usually use my giant uh, audio setup that I have here, but it is nice to have backup audio. And how I use these is I don't even use the transmitter. I just record straight onto this device. So uh, it's nice to have a microphone that I can just pick up push record and start filming. And the final way I've used audio with my a7S III in the past was with the K3M module. I really didn't have a need for that because I have a dedicated audio recorder, so I got rid of my K3M module. But I didn't really find myself using on-camera XLR microphones as much as I thought I would, given the additional heft it comes with. And my MKH416 is a giant microphone, so maybe if I got a smaller microphone, it would be better on that K3M module. But I found myself not using XLR on camera. I would use XLR feeding into an external audio recorder and just sync it in post. But that K3M module does exist. I just found myself not really using XLR mics for on-camera audio. My next accessory for the Sony a7S III are lenses. My favorite go-to walk around zoom lens is the 24 to 105. If you're looking for a good budget wide angle lens, the 20 millimeter 1.8 G lens has been that lens for me. 
I've actually preferred using the 35 millimeter 1.8 over the G Master that I'm using right now. Also, I've been loving my 90 millimeter macro. This is one of my favorite sharpest lenses that I own, and I find myself using this lens exclusively for product photography. This lens is so clinically sharp, sometimes people think they're 3D renders if the lighting is correct. One of the funnest lenses to use though is the 50 millimeter 1.2. I have videos going over the 50 millimeter 1.2, so I'll leave a link to that at the end as well. I should probably do a video on why I like all of these lenses so much with my a7S III, but just for for the purpose of this video and speed, these are the lenses that I find myself gravitating to when it comes to price and performance. My sixth accessory for the Sony a7S III are gimbals. I find myself gravitating toward DJI gimbals, specifically with the screen, uh, being the RS2 and the RS3 Pro. I have more videos about the RS3 coming out soon, but I have a couple of RS2 videos that I will link in the description down below. These two gimbals are just the easiest to use for me and I get the most reliable results with them. I've used a couple of Zhuin and other brands of gimbals, but when it comes to ease of use and simplicity and reliability, I find myself using the RS2 and now the RS3 Pro. I'll just leave these on the desk because my next accessory is in use right now. My next accessory is a monitor or multiple monitors. I've been using the Atomos Ninja 5 and the Field World LUT 7. The Ninja 5 can film ProRes RAW and the LUT 7 is just a big bright seven inch monitor that can also have LUTs on it like the Ninja 5 can. When it comes to filming an S-Log3, there are a lot of in-camera helpful tools that you can use, but at the end of the day, if you can just bake your LUT onto your monitor and preview how your footage is going to look when you put it in post, I found that is the most easiest and reliable way to properly expose your S-Log3 footage. Using the in-camera zebras and gamma display assist when filming an S-Log is really helpful and those zebras will go a really far away, but I find having a monitor with false colors and having the ability to preview your LUT that you're going to put in post anyways on your monitor is a really big benefit and it's really helped me get my S-Log3 footage fine-tuned. My next accessory I can show you that is finding a good bag. This is my Lowepro 450AW that I've showed off in a couple of different accessory videos now, but it has stood the test of time and I've taken this all over the world with me and it has not broken or let any of the contents be damaged. If you're looking for something a little more lightweight, I do like taking my Peak Design sling bag or messenger bag around. This is the larger one, and I find I can fit a body with a lens on it, a drone like the Mavic Air 2S, and another lens, and maybe even a couple of chargers uh, in here, and it really packs very well. And there's additional storage for cables and all kinds of pens and masks. <laughs> Speaking of Peak Design, my next accessory for my a7S III is my Peak Design's camera sling. And this has been nice to hold my camera. Um, it's a little sturdier than the one that comes with your um, camera itself. And my favorite part is that it comes with those little red discs that allow you to quickly attach and detach your camera to this strap. The camera strap is really nice. It's like a seatbelt material, but that quick release system for taking your camera on and off of this strap really takes it to the next level. Peak Design also has a number of other accessories you can use with those uh, quick release plates. I haven't used any of them, but I've taken that strap around the world with me and it has been durable and held up and it still looks brand new. So um, I definitely would recommend that Peak Design sling strap. My 10th accessory for the Sony a7S III is storage, lots of storage. After I'm done shooting something, I'll come back into the studio and usually put it onto my Windows machine, and I'll also put it onto my Samsung just as a backup. However, I do have the flexibility to put the save file to my T7 drive and then you know take it uh, to the office or to the field and edit it in there with my MacBook Pro. So having a SSD is not only gonna make your transfer speeds faster when just backing up projects in general, but it'll also be able to edit off of in the field as well. However, whenever I'm done with a project or if I have multiple projects that are just too big for one T7 drive, I'll move them onto a platter drive. This is more of like a long-term solution. Since these are a little slower, they are uh, 
kind of difficult to edit off of, you can do it. So for me, these are more long-term storage. After I'm done with a project, I'll put it on here and then delete it off of my machine and off of here. So I have a ton of these drives and how I choose these, um, it's not very scientific. I just go on Amazon and find the cheapest drive with the most capacity in this form factor because it's easy to have a ton of these and stack them up. Uh, I've been using the WD Black drives, the Toshiba drives, and the they're like called My Passport drives. Those are usually the best bang for your buck. Um, I have had one drive fail on me over the year, only one. So uh, if you have really important projects, I'll back them up on two different drives like this. But if they're these like YouTube videos or like really casual videos, then I'll just back it up once and that's okay. So I wrote down more than 10 accessories, but this last one um, is true for all filmmaking, but my 11th accessory is lights. The a7S III is really good at low light and the low light capabilities shouldn't be mistaken for just owning lights and positioning them how you want your image to look. The a7S III is fantastic in low light, but there really is no replacement for having good quality lights to begin with. Some more rapid fire accessories for the a7S III is a tripod, a beefy tripod. I have a video coming up all about uh, tripods that I use, so uh, be sure to subscribe for that video in the future. But also the uh, Sony shooting grip with wireless remote commander. Um, I had that and used it, I lost it, and I have been looking for it all the time. It's nice to just have a remote to quickly do some operations on the camera, especially when you're filming yourself. Also a really valuable accessory for the a7S III is sensor swabs and microfiber cloths and rocket blowers. You definitely have to be really careful whenever you're switching lenses on these Sony full frame cameras because the sensor is right behind the glass whenever you're doing a lens swap. So if you have any amount of dust in your room and you go to do a lens change, you can potentially get dust on your sensor and ruin a lot of your shots. So always being very deliberate with all of your lens changes and keeping everything as clean as possible will help you get the best image possible. So those are my accessories for the Sony a7S III. And if you enjoyed this video, I have other Sony videos that I'll leave on screen now. I just wanna say thank you guys for sticking around to the end and I'll see you in the next one.